Isaiah chapter 38. Very, uh, I've had this thought on my mind for two or three days, so uh, I'll just try it out on you. But uh, this is about Hezekiah, and, and I'm going to read the the whole chapter and and say a few words about it, and we'll go. Uh, Isaiah 38 verse 1. It says, "In those days when Hezekiah was sick unto death, and Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him." Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and prayed unto the Lord, and said, Remember me, uh, remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee how I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of the Syria, and I will defend this city. This shall be a sign unto you or unto thee from the Lord, that the Lord will do this thing that he hath spoken. Behold, I will bring again the shadows of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, thou of uh, uh, a haze, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees backwards, by which degrees it was gone down. The writing of Hezekiah, king of Judah, when he had been sick and was recovered of his sickness, I said in the cutting off of my days, I shall go to the gates of the grave. I am deprived of the residue of my years. I said I shall not see the Lord. Even the, uh, the, even the Lord in the land of the living. I shall behold man no more with the inhabitants of the world. Mine age is departed and is removed from me as the shepherd's tent. I've cut off uh, like a weaver's of my life. He will cut me off with uh, pining sickness. For days, even tonight, will thou make an end of me. I reckon till morning that as a lion... So will he break all my bones. From day even to night will thou make an end of me. Like a crane or a swallow, so did I chatter. I did mourn as a dove. Mine eyes failed with looking upward. O Lord, I am oppressed. Undertake for me. What shall I say? He hath both spoken unto me, and himself hath done it. I shall go softly all the years in the bitterness of my soul. O Lord, By these things men live, and all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. Behold, for peace I have great bitterness, but thou hast in love to my soul delivered it from the pit of corruption. For thou hast cast all my sins behind thy back. For the grave cannot praise thee, death cannot celebrate thee. They go down into the pit, cannot hope. For thy truth, the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father of the children shall make known thy truth. The Lord was ready to save me. Therefore will I sing my songs to the stringed instruments all the days of my life in the house of the Lord. For Isaiah hath said, Let them take a lump of figs and lay it for a plaster upon the boil, and he shall recover. As Kai also said, What is the sign? that I shall go up to the house of the Lord. I read that because most of us probably hadn't read that chapter in a while. But that's the the word came to Hezekiah. Uh, Hezekiah's been in in a trouble. He's been in a battle. If you read back in the uh, previous chapters, Hezekiah was a man of prayer. He knowed how to pray. He knowed how to get all the Lord in here. When he heard he's going to die, the Bible said he, uh, he prayed. He turned his face to the wall and began to pray. And of course, on down in the verses is the prayer he prayed. But God told him, said, I've heard your prayer, and I'm going to let you live. Fifteen more years. I'm going to give you fifteen more years in your life. Move the degree backward. Gave uh, Hezekiah fifteen more years. That'd kind of be, that'd be okay. Kind of be bad, too, because you know in fifteen years you're going to die. <laughs> but uh, it, it'd be good in one way you get fifteen more years. But every day you live, you're looking for that day. Amen. But... Uh, I want to talk to you tonight on uh, why do you want to live? Why do you want to live? We could ask uh, uh, Hezekiah tonight. Uh, Hezekiah, uh, why do you want to live? 
In other words, he said, set your house in order, you're going to die. Set your house. You know, sometimes you don't get that warning. Sometimes you just go out of here quickly. You don't get that warning. I tell you, I hope we get, I hope we get a warning before we go because you can set your house in order if it ain't in order. But he said, set your house in order, you're going to die. His guy said, I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I, I want to live. And he began to pray, and he began to talk to the Lord. And you know, every one of us is an appointed and the man wants to die. Every one of us has got an uh, appointment of death uh, that's going to come. We don't know when that is, but it's going to come. In fact, uh, Ecclesiastes said there's a time to be born, and there's a time to die. The day you was born, there was a day set that you'd die. Amen. And so, but I, of a Hezekiah, it was his appointment coming up. But he said, Lord, I don't want to die. You know, I thought about several times in the Bible, there's, uh, there's people that has died. There's people, I, I, I pastored church and go visit people and they've been in the hospital. You know what they say? Preacher, I'm just tired of living. I'm just tired of fighting this thing. I'm tired of several people when I was pastoring Chatt or Knoxville. They just say, Preacher, I, I'm through fighting. I'm over. And they just wanted to die. Uh, and some know they're going to die. Uh, I had uh, several in the church. I remember one Wednesday night going to church, and uh, Sister Marinelle called. She said, Preacher, can you stop by the hospital? And I said, I will. And I stopped by the hospital on the way to church Wednesday night. And I went in, and she said, Preacher, sit down here. I want to talk to you. And I said, okay. She said, Preacher, I'm going home. And I said, well, that's great. I said, I'm glad you get to going home. She said, no. No, I'm going home. And she pointed up toward heaven. I'm going home. And I said, well, I know we're all going home one of these days, you know, and, and everything. But she told me. She said, this is what I want you to do at my funeral. I want you to preach on Psalm 23. And I want to have somebody sing Amazing Grace. She tell me all about her funeral. She said, I'm going home. Well, I went to church that night and told them what she said. And when I got up the next morning, they called, said, Mary and Elle went home. Amen. And some people just know. Uh, I had another lady. We called her Granny. She called me one day. She said, Preacher, I'm going home. I'm, uh, I said, I'm fixing to go on to heaven. I said, well, I hope we all go to heaven. You know, you don't really know how to answer people like that. And she said, no, I'm, I'm moving out really soon. And I said, well, I'll be up there at the hospital, and I'll, I'll see you in a few minutes. And she said, Preacher, I'm sorry. I'll be gone before you get here. I got to the hospital, and they said, Preacher, she's gone. Amen. And so, you know, there's some people know that they just know when they get down to that place that they're going to die, and they're going to go to heaven, and they're going to go. And, you know, and sometimes you can ask people, why do you want to live? Some people say, you know, there's some people living for retirement. Amen. They're living for retirement. Well, I'm going to tell you, it ain't what you think it's going to be when you get there. Amen. Uh, but uh, my boy said, I'm, I'm busier now than I was when I was a pastor. Amen. But... But uh, some people say, I'm just living for that day that I can retire and, uh, and just do what I want to do. Amen. My father-in-law, he done that. He works at the banker. He'd say all the time, I'm living for the day I can retire. And when I retire, I'm not going to mow my yard no more. I'm not going to wash my car no more. <laughs> I'm going to have it done, you know, and I ain't going to do nothing. And he didn't do nothing. And he was, went down and didn't last long. But uh, some people, they're living, uh, they want to live to the, see their kids grown and to get married or they won't live till they get some grandkids. Amen. Christian, you need to hurry up. Amen. Doug may be out of here for long. He'd like to have a grand young. Amen. But anyway, uh, we want to live to see our kids. Won't live to, I mean, uh, you can ask people all kinds of things why they want to live. Why they want to live. And Hezekiah here tells us some reasons that he wants to live. And your life, life is very precious. Amen. When you think about life, I, I wrote this down. Uh, the Bible talks about life several times. And I'm going to give you a little introduction. I'm going to give you three little things. But I thought about this, what the Bible says about life. Uh, the, in James chapter 5, it says life is a vapor. It's here today, and it's gone tomorrow. You know, sometimes we, we you don't really think about that. You don't think about that when you're young. You just think you're going to live forever. But when you get older, it seems like, you know, older people, uh, uh, Slick, are you old? Amen. Uh, Slick ain't old, so we'll pick on somebody else. Amen. But... But, you know, when the older you get, some of you older people realize, you know, used to, used to, it just uh, seemed like just drug along. Christmas would never get here. Amen. Now, after Easter, the next day's Christmas. Amen. I mean, just bang, it's here. It seems like life just flies, and it's just like a vapor, he said. It's here today. That's like a vapor on a stove. You take that pot, and you put it, and the steam comes up. It rides so far, and then it's gone. 
And, and James said that's what life is. Job said it's like a wind that just passes through. Psalm says it's like smoke that ascends. Smoke will come out of a fireplace. It'll ascend so much and then it just disappears into the atmosphere. Think about uh, Peter said it's like grass. It's here today and withers tomorrow. It's like a flower that blooms and then it fades away. It's like a shadow. It's here and then it's gone. And so the Bible speaks a lot about life, how it's here and it's gone. I, I, I thought about this. You can ask yourself, what's life? Really, life is a gift from God. Amen. Amen. If you've got life today and you're breathing, it's a gift from God. All he's got to do is say, drop dead and you're gone. Cut your breath off and you're out of here. So life, every day that we live, is really a gift from the Lord. Every time we get up every morning, Lord, just thank God that we got to see another sunrise. It's just a gift from God. It's a one-time thing. It's a one-time thing. You got one life to live. That's it. Can't go back. You're not coming back as a poodle dog or nothing else. Amen. You got one life to live, and that life, that life slowly, day by day, is passing away. And so many people has wasted their life. I remember when young folks used to say, Preacher, when I get grown and I get married and everything, I'm going to get married and I'm going to get in church. It's going to start really living for God. Well, you can live for God as a kid. You can live for God as a teenager. Amen. Don't waste that time. Don't waste that life that you got. Uh, live that life. Amen. And so life is a one-time thing. It's something you ought to take serious. Life is really something. It's not a game. It's not a joke. But it's something that you ought to take serious. It's something that won't last forever. Amen. Life will not. I know we'd all like to live. I pray every day. Lord, let me live. Let me preach till I'm 90 years old. I've been praying that for years. I don't know why. I just like to preach till I'm 90 years old. Yes. Now, y'all might have to help me up here, but I like to preach till I'm 90 years old. I don't know why I do that, but I prayed that. My wife told me the other day, she, I said, I'm still praying. I can preach till I'm 90. She said, you know that it ain't but 18 more years. I said, shut up. Amen. And, uh, but uh, I, I just, you know, but it's, it, it won't last forever. We know. We know. And, and you don't have to wait till old age either. Sometimes life ends in young age. And so, but it's not going to last. It's something you can add to. It's something you can give to God. We go on and on and on. And you can ask yourself the question, what have you done with your life? What have you really done with your life? You know, a lot of times we look back and at our life and we say, well, I've wasted so many years. Wasted so many years, preacher. I hear people say, I wish I'd have got saved at a younger age. And I, I got saved when I was eight, and I'm glad I did. Amen. If I noticed so good at eight, I'd have got saved when I was five. Amen. But uh, I got saved, and I, I don't really know a lot about that out yonder. Uh, but there's a lot of you that's probably lived the life that you look back and you say, boy, if I could go back and change that, I sure wouldn't, I sure wouldn't have went in that route. I wouldn't that, went in that direction. But uh, it's something, my friend, and you look at your life, what have you done in your life? What have you done in your life since you got saved? Yeah. Since you got saved, since you got born again? Or do you, I, I hear people talk, used to, pastor, you'd hear people talk, say, preacher, well, we're working right now trying to raise our family and everything, but when we retire now, we're going to get into church and we're going to really go to work. Well, they're worse than ever when they retire. They're in Florida when you're having church, amen? And uh, they're running all over the country while you're having, uh, you know, and so life is something that's very precious. And, and, and so here in these verses, uh, he said, Hezekiah, Hezekiah, you're going to die. Set your house in order. You're going to die. You ain't going to live. And you go over in the next chapter, in chapter 39, he makes a statement. He has a visitor come, and he shows him around in his house. And they ask him, said, what have they seen in thine house? What have they seen? You know, sometimes we can ask ourselves that question. What has they seen? What has people seen in our house, in our life? But here he asked the question. He said, hey, can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody just coming, man of God coming, Isaiah is the man of God. Can you imagine him just coming up to you, Sister Nett, and just say, Sister Nett, you're going to die. Set your house in order. You're going to die. But he, he, that'd make you think sober. That'd kind of straighten you up. And the Bible said Isaiah told him that. And the Bible said in verse 2 that Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall and began to pray. If you read them verses, you know what he's praying. He said, I shall go to the grave because God said so. But in essence, in verses number 16 is my text verse. In verse 16, he said, O Lord, by these things men live, and all these things is the life of my spirit. So wilt thou recover me and make me to live. He said, God, heal me. Now, he had a ball. He had a ball of infection. 
in there. And Isaiah, uh, uh, Hezekiah wasn't but 39 years old. He's in the prime of life. And uh, he's got boils. He's full of infection. And, and uh, God sent the messenger there and said, uh, set your house in order. You're going to die. You're going to die. Isaiah said, Lord, I don't want to die. Make me to live. Make me to live. Let me live, Lord. And I got to thinking, why did Isaiah want to live? Why did he want to live? Well, first of all, in verse number 2, in uh, verse number 3, he, uh, Isaiah pours his heart out to God. In verse number 3, he said, it, And remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. I thought about, first of all, Hezekiah wanted to live, that he could live for the Lord just a little bit more. <laughs> he said, Lord, you know, you know I've been walking with you, and you know I've been working for you, Lord, and I don't want to die. I want to live, Lord, because I just want to walk with you just a little bit longer. I want to work for you just a little bit longer. I'm not ready to go. I've got something else I want to do. I've got some more work I want to do for the Lord. I want to walk with you and fellowship with you just a little bit more. I don't know about you. I don't want to die because I just want to work a little bit more for the Lord. Amen. I just want to walk with him. I don't know about you. I enjoy walking with the Lord. I enjoy fellowshipping with God. Riding up here today, me and the Lord had a good time. Amen. And just talk to him and fellowship with him and uh, have a good time. Turn the radio on, the preacher's on. He hadn't preached about halfway through. I was helping him, amen. And uh, I told him, I said, man, if you can't finish this, I will, amen. And I'm riding up the road, helping him out. And, you know, and I love fellowshipping with the Lord. I get up early in the morning, early in the morning, and I get up, and I sit in there and get my Bible out, and I read and fellowship and talk to God. And boy, I tell you, it ain't nothing like walking with the Lord. And I tell you, I want to go to the Lord. I want to go to heaven and see the Lord and be with the Lord. But I tell you what, I just want to live just a little bit longer so I can just keep walking with him and working for him, worshiping him, living for him. And he said, I want to do that. I think about Paul, Galatians 2.20. Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but it's Christ that liveth within me. And the life that I now live, he said, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said over there, he said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Go over to 2 Timothy chapter 4. He said, I fought a good fight. I've kept the faith. I've finished the court. But friend Paul said, I don't want to die. I want to live for Christ. And if I'm going to live, I want to live for Christ. I want to work a little more, do a little something else, walk a little bit more for God. I don't know about you, I just love seeing uh, God do things. Amen. I'm not the best in the world. But I tell you what, I ain't the worst either. Amen. I'm glad, I'm glad God does work to us sometimes. Amen. Brother, uh, uh, I, my mind went blank. I call him Slick Junior so long I can't even think his name. But anyway, Slick Junior back here, they, him and his good wife came down to Knoxville uh, on vacation and heard me preach on the Sunday. And you know what? I preached and, and had a good time preaching. But I'll tell you what was worth it. It's when them two young girls walked down the aisle and got saved and got born again. I tell you, that'll make you want to live and preach a little bit longer because there's another sinner out there you might reach before Jesus comes. Yeah, my friend preached down in Georgia, had an old girl that's backslid and come and got right with God. Brother Bobby Cato's uh, uh, youngest daughter got right with God while I was over there in the meeting. I'm going to tell you, I tell you, I, you, I want to live just a little bit longer and work a little more, preach just a little bit more, witness just a little bit more, do a little something else for God. Some other backslider might need help and I could help. Somebody else might need encouragement. I talked to a fella, talked to a fella about, a, uh, well, a month ago, I guess, his wife died. His wife died. He's having a hard time uh, with his wife. He's uh, two years younger than I am. His wife died just two or three months ago, and he's having a hard time. His name's George, and I never met him before. Didn't know him. Didn't really know all of his situation. Uh, but I did know. That, uh, I went over. I got a friend of mine owns a car lot, and, and uh, every once in a while, he'll want me to go pick a car up or something if I'm home. And he sent me and George to pick up his car. I didn't know George from nobody. 
He introduced me that day. And, and he told me, he said, his wife just passed away. Hey, and anyway, we left and went to get that car. And all the way up there, old George got the cry. I said, what's the matter, George? He said, preacher, he said, my wife, my wife passed away about three months. And I was sure having a hard time. I just can't hardly, I can't hardly get a grip on it. Uh, boy, I mean, the Holy Ghost hit me. I went to, I just about halfway went to preaching. Uh, I went to quoting scriptures uh, and telling my friend how God works. Uh, he said, I just don't understand it. I said, I'm going to tell you why she died. Uh, he said, why did she die, preacher? I said, it's the will of God. Uh, I said, it was the will of God. If it hadn't have been, she would have still been here. Uh, and I talked to him and helped him. I went by today before I came up here. I went by and, uh, to see Jason in a minute, and I walked in, and old George was there. As soon as I walked in, he go over there and he grabbed me right in the middle of that business and hugged my neck. I, he said, Preacher, you help me. I, he said, You help me. He said, You pull me up. I, I said, I ain't been I ain't had a bad day since I talked to you and you're giving them scriptures. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna live just a little bit longer like Hezekiah, that I can walk with God and I can work for God and I can worship God. And just Isaiah said, or Hezekiah said, I don't want to die. I want to live for the Lord just a little bit longer. Amen. I'll tell you, y'all, we just want to live for God because somebody else is out there that may need the Lord. Yep. Amen. My grandson got saved the other day. That grandson, 16 years old, my friend, he'd been given problems. That every once in a while, I'd get a little word in on him. My friend, he got saved the other morning. I went to church with his dad, and he got born again. He called me and said, Papa. I said, guess what? I said, what? He said, I got saved this morning. I said, you did? He said, yeah, I got saved. And he said, that's the best thing ever done in my life. I said, I'll tell you, it's the best thing ever happened to me. And I'll tell you what, I told my boy, I said, how's old? His name's Gage. I call him Paige. I said, how's Paige doing? He said, oh, Daddy, you wouldn't believe it. Said, he's like a different kid. Said, he's like a different person. I'll tell you what, my friend. I'm going to live a little bit longer so I can say a word here and say a word there. Do something here. Maybe touch somebody and they get born again. Get rival God. Get some family back together. Save some marriage. I'm like Hezekiah. What do you want to live for? I want to live that I can just work and live for God just a little bit longer. Amen. Then I thought about another thing. Why do you want to live? Why do you want to live, Hezekiah? Well, look down, look down in verses number 17. Uh, verse 17 said, Behold, for peace I had great bitterness, but thou is, hast in love delivered my soul from the pit uh, of corruption, for thou hast cast all my sins behind the back, for the grave cannot praise thee. He said, God, if I go to the grave, I can't praise you. Dad can't praise him. He said, Dad cannot celebrate thee. They that go down into the pit uh, cannot hope for truth. Look at verse 19. The living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. Oh, uh, Hezekiah said, I don't want to live just so I can work and, and walk with him. But I want to live so I can just praise him some more. <laughs> I just want to praise him just a little bit more uh, before I get out of here. Uh, he said, I, I thought about that. He probably wanted to praise him for past blessings. Amen. You know, sometimes it's good to just rent a miss back and think about some of the past blessings. Amen. My anniversary Sunday of preaching was this past Sunday. This past Sunday of uh, 56 years I've been preaching. And uh, me and Kay was riding down the road in Missouri a while back. I was riding back from Georgia the other day. And uh, she said something about my anniversary. Hey, and, I, and I was kidding her. I said, I said, you want to buy my breakfast for, for my anniversary celebration? Uh, she said, no, amen. But anyway, uh, uh, my friend, but, uh, we got to coming up the road. You know what we got to thinking about? I got to thinking about this. Brother Josh riding up the highway from Georgia. Was coming in trying to get home. Uh, had to be in North Carolina the next morning. Uh, and I was trying to get to the house. And I got to thinking about that. And I said, honey, you know what? She said, what? I said, I've been on the road 50-something years. Uh, and I said, I've never had a wreck out here on the road for God. I've never broke down and failed to get home. I'm my friend, I've always made it to the house through the snow, the storms, and the rain. Somebody told me while it goes, said, you driving back tonight, it's going to storm. I said, the car don't leak, amen. And my friend, listen, I'm my friend, I've traveled up and down this road. God's always fed us. God's always kept close. The appeals has been paid. Hadn't had no wreck. Safety in the car. So you say, preacher, a so-and-so wreck. I can't help that. I'm just telling you what happened to me. I'm going to tell you what I I can't look back. I ain't got no complaints. God's been good to this boy. God has helped me. 
preached all over. I'm not tooting my horn, just telling you how it is. That preached all over the country. My friend, from the north to the south, the east to the west. And my friend, son, the world, sometimes I wonder how the world got there. But I'll tell you, God, God has been good to me. I will live just a little bit longer so I can tell everybody about the past blessings and shout and praise him just for what he already done. <laughs> Amen. He done anything for you. You ought to tell somebody. <laughs> we, we we're sitting in a meeting while back, and y'all know me. I, I talk all the time, and I can't help that. And, and, and the only one that can out talk me is Bobby Cato. Amen. He's the only, and, he, and I just quit. I don't even try it no more. I just give up. Amen. Bobby, I know you're listening because you said you was going to, but I'm just telling you, I can't out talk you. Amen. But anyway, uh, uh, my friend, listen, I, 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 I get in places sometimes. Brother Doug used to do this all the time, but uh, I get in places, and you know what? Somebody else say, Preacher, tell so and so. There was something, you know, I've told, and I tell it. And my wife, she'll look, she says, Don't get him started. <laughs> That's what she'll say. We're sitting out at the table in Georgia. Preachers around, a bunch of people around, some little young preachers there. And I started telling her, and one of them asked me something. She said, don't get him started. I said, we'll be here till midnight. I said, she get him started telling him about what happened and God's blessings and what's happening in meetings and church. I said, he'll be here till midnight. I take heaven. If I get started, I just want to tell everything I know what God has already done for me. Well, just a little bit longer just to tell of the past blessings. Not only the past blessings, I'm going to tell about the present blessings. God only has not been good, or has been good to me, but he's still being good to me. Amen. Amen. Everybody said, you won't be a preacher three, four years. That parking to get you. It's been six years, and I'm still getting with it. Amen. I may be down tomorrow, but that's fine. Amen. I'm going to tell you what. My, my, my sister says, you ought to just quit. Said you ought to go home and just quit. Said you don't need to be traveling. You're gonna get out of here and have a spell one of these days. I said I have a spell all the time. I said I have a spell at home. I have a spell, but I can't get up at home. It's just as good as I do in the motel. I said I'd rather have a spell doing something. But I'll tell you, God's kept me going, and God has let me preach a little longer, and God has helped me to go on and do something. And man, He's still clothing me. I got a little bit of money in my pocket. I got some groceries at home. I got a car to drive. I got a roof over my head. God, God has been good to this boy. I just want to live a little longer and praise him for the blessings that God has given us. God's given you a place to worship God. That's a blessing. Doors are still open. Amen. Doors are still open. It's here able to come. And some countries ain't like that. Some countries you can't worship God like you do now. God allows us to come here every Sunday and worship. Amen. I tell you, I tell you, I, I just, I just live. My, my preaching is from uh, Sister Net. My preaching is from. I lost two prayer words. I need somebody to pick up one. I lost two prayer. Doesn't have a lady pick it up. I had two widow ladies. You don't have to be a widow lady to do this. But I had two widow ladies. Ever since I went to evangelism for the second time, they prayed for me every day. I buried both of them. I told my wife coming up in our Georgia, I said, I pick me, I gotta pick me up a couple more prayer wars. They'd call me, they'd send me up. I'd send them a thing. I said, Hey, April don't look too good. I told, uh, one day, one day this lady from Florida, she I called her and I said, Hey, you still praying for me? She said, I am. I said, November don't look too good. You need to pray about that. She said, I will. Two days later, I was booked solid in November. I called her and I said, Hold, hold up a little bit, amen. I, I said, uh, you're killing me, amen. I, I didn't mean every day. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, my friend, listen, God, I, I told Kay the other day, I looked at my date book, and, 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 and not only pray, I don't only pray to live till I'm 90. I pray over this little book every day. I said, God, wherever you want me to be, you put her in here. You book it up. Uh, if you don't want me there, don't book it. Uh, if you want me to stay home, I'll stay home. Uh, if you want me to book it, you book it. Uh, I've been preaching 56 years. Never asked nobody to let me preach. Uh, never told nobody what I had to have an offering. Uh, thank God, I'm glad. God, I told Kay the other day, I said, April, April. I ain't got nowhere to go in April. My friend, listen, I, that was about a week ago. I'm booked solid in April. Amen. Uh, he said, what? Well, that's God. Uh, God takes care of that. I tell you, he's a prayer. God. He's not just kept me busy in the past. He's keeping me busy in the present. I will live just a little bit longer and say God is still alive. He's still on the throne. He's still working in our hearts and our lives. Amen. 
I wasn't going to get excited, but here I am again. I'm glad. I want to, as Hezekiah said, I want to live just a little longer so I can praise Him. Past, present, and promised blessings. I want to shout on those promises. God said He would bless us. Ouch under. He, in fact, he told him, he said, he said, I'm going to go ahead and take care of Altair. I'm going to take care of Syria, and I'm going to take care of all that stuff. He promised Hezekiah, said, Ouch under. Weren't you glad we got, we got promises? Ouch under. One promise is, he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. He never has. He's not now, and he won't tomorrow. He said, supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory. He ain't broke. Old Samar let it come up earlier today. And he meant he was, he's, he's, you just have to know this guy. He's a smart addict. I got other words, but preaching's sake, he's a smart addict. He come up, you know what he said? He said, what are you going to do now, preacher? Off that big old truck. Gas went up. What you going to do now? I said, my God can feed an elephant because he can a pony. I said, God can fill this truck up because he can your little old Volkswagen. Amen. Hey, God ain't broke. <laughs> He's a running whale. Amen. The government may be messed up, but God ain't messed up. The government may be out of control, but God still got his hand on this thing. And I tell you what, I don't answer to them anyway. My friend, I answer to God sitting on the throne. He ain't never failed me. He ain't never let me down. And thank God I'm glad tomorrow he'll still be there. He'll still be faithful. And I just want to live just a little longer just to praise him for his blessings. Hezekiah said, I just want to live a little longer that I can just work for the Lord, son. To live for him, son. I want to live a little longer that I can praise him some more. But then looking down in verse number 19, he said, The living, the living, he shall praise thee, as I do this day. The Father to the children shall make known thy truth. He said, I want to live just a little bit longer that I can tell my children the truth. I can tell my children what's right and what's wrong. I want to live just a bit longer that I can tell my family, tell my kids and my grandkids what's right and what's wrong. I got a granddaughter. I got a granddaughter. Heard me talk about Lexi. Lexi's always been half a mile, but she's close. Come by my house last night. I said, well, I could give you a lecture, but I'm going to let you off tonight. And she's out seeing and broke her hearts and still out there. And uh, somebody said, Dave, won't you just let it go? I said, let it go? <laughs> God didn't let me go. Preacher man didn't let me go. My mama didn't let me go. She prayed me in. I said, I ain't letting her go. I'm going to hold on to her as long as I can. I'm going to get a word in every time I can, every chance I get. I'm going to get a prayer in every chance I can get. I've been trying to help her some, trying to get her straightened out. And she came back the other day and, and uh, needed, needed some financial help. And I was going to help her. And, and I said, sit down here in the car. And uh, my oldest son was there. My oldest son, he said, oh, no, Lexi. See, when I, when I was my boys at home, yeah, when we had them little come-to-Jesus meetings, we done it in the truck. I'd say, go get in the truck. I'll be there in a minute. They hated that truck. <laughs> they hated it. I remember one time Kevin come out and Whitney's out in the yard. Kevin come out and Whitney said, you want to shoot ball? He said, I ain't got time. got to go sit in the truck. <laughs> Not talk to them. I mean, you know, you get them in that truck, they ain't nowhere else they can go. They ain't no TV and phones and all that stuff. We're sitting in there. We talked. So I put Lex in the car and I said, let's talk. We're going to sit here and talk. I said, I said I'm going to give you some money to try to help you. But I said, if I'm going to give you some money for help you, then you, I deserve you to listen to me. <laughs> and I said, I'm not mad at you. I'm not being ugly. I'm jumping down your throat. I just want to tell you a little bit about the Lord. Yeah. I just want to tell you, my Lord loves you and I love you. Your Nana loves you. Uh, Sit there and talk to her. Finally, little tears rolled down her face. Hey, I don't want, I don't want to die just yet. I'd like to see her get back. <laughs> I'd just like, in fact, if she gets back, but Josh, and y'all hear a rumble, it ain't a storm. It ain't thunder. It'll be me hollering, coming up through the holler through Kentucky. Amen? I just want to live just a bit longer. I got a big old boy, six foot five. <laughs> Yesterday, that there, and he's, he's running a little tight, and, and I told him, I said, son, I said, I'll help you if you can. What can I do? And we was talking and everything. He's turned around and 
and he, 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 we talked a little bit and so on and so forth. And he started to leave. I said, hey, before we go, I said, I need some help. He said, well, you hate daddy. I walked over a big old six foot five. I said, I need you to squat just a little bit. And he squatted, and I got him around the head. His head looked like your slick, and I was rubbing top of that head. I said, I just want to tell you one more time. Jesus loves you, and your daddy loves you. And I pray for you every morning about 5 o'clock. I said, I pray for you. And I just want to tell you one more time. Jesus loves you. I want to live just a little bit longer to tell my kids the truth and tell my kids what's right and see them get right with God. Hey, I want to live just a bit longer to tell your kids and preach a little bit and tell them what's right and what's wrong. And they don't have to go to hell. They can go to heaven. They don't have to live in sin. They don't have to have a wicked testimony. They can love for God and be a Christian from young age all the way through. You don't have to go out and test the world. As God said, I want to live just a little bit longer. See, the world ain't going to teach them. Politics ain't going to teach them. Government ain't going to teach them. It's us. <laughs> if you teach a Sunday school class, you ought to say, Lord, I'm going to live just a little bit longer. Teach that class one more time. If you, I'm going to tell you how many they say this, and I'm trying to quit. I don't know who works with young people around here. And uh, I've been going to church. I've been going here. I've been a member here, what, net six years? I still don't know some of y'all's names. Except brother and sister. My wife said, say, who's that? I said, don't ask me. I just call him brother. Amen. She said, they all know your name. I said, I can't help it. <laughs> but when you're a Christian, you can get by with some of that stuff, can't you? Amen. Hey, sister, how are you doing? You know, and, and you tell me your name, I'll forget it before we get out of here. I called him the wrong name last time I was up here. I may have called you the wrong name. No, I don't know. Amen. But you know what? You know what? If you're a Sunday school teacher and you're working, or you're working with the young people, there's more to this thing than just having fun. Somewhere you need, somewhere you need to let them know, sin is sin, wrong is wrong, and right's right. You need to let them know what this Bible says about sin. Little boy down home, he he drinks, and I don't know where that comes from. That ain't mine. <laughs> there's a little boy down home. He drinks. He's just uh, 19 years old. And he drinks bad. 19 year old boy drinks every night. I know his daddy. His daddy said, his daddy said, son, I'm going to take you over and let you talk to Preacher Goodson. He said, I ain't going over. He said, yeah, you need to go. I want you to go. I'll go with you. He said, daddy, only going to go over. He said, he'll choke me to death with scriptures out of the Bible. I thought, well, that's what I want to do. Tell you the truth. Tell you what the Bible says. Don't be afraid. To tell these young people. And tell your kids about the Lord. And I want to live. And let them know what the truth is and what's right. Amen. Amen. We're living in that day to day, brother John, where everybody does what's seem it's right in their own eyes. I'll tell you, there's still a Bible. And this right here is your guideline. I don't care what laws they change. This book ain't changed. Churches has changed, but this book ain't changed. Preachers has changed, but this book ain't changed. It still says it's wrong. Amen? There's things in this Bible, and I want to live just a little bit longer. Teach my children, teach my kids, and my grand. I got a little kid, a little baby, grandbaby, she's four years old. Pert as a doll. She's the comedian of the family. She took my place. I said, I don't like you. You're funnier than I am. She's just four. I want to live a little bit longer. Just keep telling her about the day she was born. I picked her up, whispered in her ear. I said, Jesus loves you. She comes over to the house and stays. She'll crawl up my lap. She'll say, Papa, you about ready to go for a walk? I said, I'm ready. I said, before we go, I got a secret today. She'll say, what? She'll get right up her. I say, Jesus loves you. The other day we was going for a walk, Christian. I said, I got a secret to you. She said, I know. Jesus loves me. Let's go. <laughs> I said, well, at least you remembered it. <laughs> Had it on her brain. Amen. What are you saying, preacher? I want to live just a little bit longer. I just want to work and labor for him just a little longer. I want to praise him just a little bit more. <laughs> never have seemed like I never have just praised him enough. Amen. And then I want to live that I can tell my children about the Lord. So I'm going to ask you a question now. Why you want to live? What would you tell? Huh? What would you tell? 
I hope we, I hope we can get that truth. We'll live. Paul said, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. I know you know this. For me to live, you could put anything in there. Riches, see things, have things, put anything you want to, and it, it, it can never say to die is gain. The only thing you can put on there that will make die is gain is Christ. For me to live is Christ. That's what he said. Lord, I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want you to add my life. Give me more life just so I can have more fun. I don't want you to give me more life so I can see these things and see the mountains and see make this trip and, and retire. He said, I want to live just a little longer that I can work for you just a little more. Walk with you. Praise you a little more. Teach my children what's right and wrong. Amen. I'm through. Let's stand. Josh, you can. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.